Friends, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our event, Smart Cars Driven by Data. It's our second passenger car conference on this important subject. Our first one, held two years ago, gave a broad overview of the benefits and implications of the connected car. Today, we want to zoom in more details on the heart of smart mobility, data. What digital infrastructure will be needed for cars in the future? How can we best secure personal data? How can this data be shared in a controlled and secure manner? Today's event is extremely timely as it comes just one day after the publication of the European Master Plan on Cooperative Intelligent Transport Systems. Now, first of all, I would like to set the scene for today's discussions by taking you on a short visual journey with the smart car. And after this, I will come back uh, in more details on ASEAS initiatives in the three data-related fields we will be addressing today. So, fasten your seatbelts and follow me for this data-driven ride. So, today, more and more objects have network connectivity allowing them to send and receive data. Now, this is the case with many everyday household appliances, from a refrigerator to your smart TV. And it's also the case with your car. Smart cars rely on the collection, use, and processing of data from different resources, including the driver, the vehicle itself, and its surroundings. Now, most vehicle data are of a technical nature. They exist only momentarily and are never stored. The rest of the data can potentially be put to a wide variety of uses, for instance, to advise the driver on the easiest and safest routes, to automatically pay for parking or tolls, to contact emergency services in case of an accident, to predict when the vehicle will need maintenance or repair, or sometimes even repair the vehicle remotely, and to provide local information, entertainment, and other services. Now, to enable all of this to happen, we will need seamless communications networks to transmit the data. Networks that provide full coverage with low latency and enough bandwidth to process data for millions of cars. Now, the advantage of mobile communications is that the infrastructure already exists. However, investments have mainly occurred in urban areas where the people are and the mobile phones. We now also need strong investments in digital highways to connect, to get connectivity where people drive. So to that end, Europe will need to strengthen its communications networks to improve coverage and reliability. But with the development of Internet of Things, people can have genuine concerns about the protection of personal data and privacy. At the same time, however, what we see, more and more people are willing to share data with service providers if it means that they can benefit from useful services. Data protection is and will remain a priority for automotive manufacturers. Our industry is committed to provide its customers with a high level of data protection to maintain their trust. The bottom line of the autos industry data protection commitment is that personal data will be shared with third parties only on the basis of a contract with the consent of the customer or to comply with legal obligations. Now, the big question is, what is the best means of providing safe and secure access to this data for third parties? On the one hand, some parties are calling for direct access to data inside the vehicle, but this would facilitate hacker attacks since every new external data interface increases the number of potential targets and entry points. 
Additional safety risks in terms of driver distraction could also arise if external parties are granted uncontrolled access to the vehicle's onboard systems. Because a car is simply not a smartphone on wheels. Nor is it a PC that can be rebooted if a problem occurs when driving. A car requires much higher standards in safety, security, and privacy. So vehicle manufacturers are fundamentally willing to share, select the data provided this occurs in a safe and secure manner. To limit the risks, a better and more balanced alternative to direct in-vehicle data access would be off-board access. This would allow vehicle manufacturers to communicate the relevant vehicle data in a secure manner to an off-board facility from where third parties can access it. We think this would provide an open, yet protected, interface for the provision of services by third parties, contributing to, contributing to innovation and allowing customer choice and fair and open competition. The increasing ability of cars to exchange data with the outside world holds great potential to revolutionize the driving experience. But to benefit from this, a policy framework needs to be put in place to strengthen our connectivity infrastructure, protect vehicle data, and facilitate third-party access to data. So, what has ASEA now been doing in these three fields? Let's first touch upon infrastructure. As we saw in the presentation just now, Europe needs to strengthen its communications networks and improve coverage and reliability. There is a need for cross-border coordination on infrastructure rollout and investments. We have different types of communications technology today. Uh, fixed, satellite, short-range, wireless. These are all competing, yet complementary technologies. And the kind of communications technology and therefore infrastructure that will be needed will depend on the use case. What data set is being transmitted? What is the volume? Is it time or safety critical? Uh, probably a mix of different communication technologies will be needed in the future. So the automotive industry sees the need to move to the fifth generation mobile networks, 5G, with full coverage all over Europe as soon as possible. Without this, it will not be possible to send data from one vehicle to another within milliseconds, which will be indispensable for many safety critical applications. And that is why ASEA is proud to be part of the European and the European Automotive and Telecom Alliance, an initiative uh, by Commissioner Oettinger, which was formally launched uh, earlier this year. This alliance now includes six sector organizations, suppliers, OEMs from the automotive side, and then the telecom companies, including telecom operators, vendors, uh, and as I said, automotive manufacturers and suppliers, 38 companies in total. And we are happy to welcome here today many members of the Alliance. Now, as well as tackling the infrastructure investment needed to address connectivity needs, the project of the Alliance will also tackle interoperability issues and the improving of safety and security. So that's the first point, infrastructure. Secondly, data protection, which is a key pillar of the cooperative ITS master plan. Now, we are fortunate that the EU has a tradition of strongly protecting our privacy. Last year, it adopted the General Data Protection Regulation, which is probably the most modern data protection law in the world. This law contains many provisions that protect consumers against undue processing of their personal data. 
data protection is an issue automakers take very seriously. We didn't wait for the directive to get in place, anticipating the entry into force of this new law, which will occur next year. We, in 2015, adopted a set of data protection principles in relation to connected vehicles. And, and here are just a few examples of, of what these principles contain. We have one on transparency, where we say that information about which data is processed will be made available to consumers in a clear, meaningful, and easily accessible manner. We have a principle on privacy, privacy by design. New vehicles and services should be designed, developed, and engineered with data protection requirements in mind. And last but not least, I want to touch upon access to data. Infrastructure, data protection, access to data. Now, over the last few months, automotive manufacturers have been working very closely with our suppliers to define the best way to provide secure and safe access to vehicle data to, in, to interested third parties. The concept we have been working on will provide an alternative to direct in-vehicle access to data. And this should minimize the risks I already highlighted earlier. This would involve vehicle manufacturers communicating the relevant vehicle data in a secure manner to an off-board facility from where third parties can access it. In addition to an external server managed by each of the vehicle manufacturers, one or more neutral servers would also be installed, providing service providers with an alternative to the manufacturer's server. Now, this neutral service would neither be operated nor financed by the manufacturers. So, truly neutral service. This concept for the transfer of vehicle generated data would, in our opinion, strike a fair balance between the legitimate market-driven needs of service providers, the interest of consumers, and the need to protect their personal data and privacy, as well as the protection of road safety, security, and intellectual property rights. We have, together with CLEPA, issued a press release on this joint collaboration effort, and those of you who are interested can get a copy when you leave this room. Ladies and gentlemen, data holds a lot of potential to enhance the mobility experience, but all this doesn't come without challenges. Challenges and risks that need to be properly addressed. And this is precisely why we are holding the event today to explore with all our partners, within the industry and outside, the best way to use data to increase comfort and convenience for customers, to improve products and services, and to contribute to its societal goals, such as improving road safety and reducing fuel consumption. I'm quite sure that we will have animated and fruitful discussions here this afternoon. And with that, it's my pleasure to hand back over to Jackie. Thank you for your attention.